So today we are looking at limits on graphs. Um, I believe I printed this for you, Pearl. You should need to be right now. But we will be looking at limits on graphs. And we'll also be talking about two special kinds of limits. Infinite limits and limits at infinity. So that's kind of the goal there. <sighs> I'll pause. I was bummed. Dude, I was really bummed. All right. So here we go. Let's do some math. Oh, we'll also talk about three play, three ways that a limit might not exist today. That'll be the very last slide. We're not going to do anything with it today. But we will talk about three ways that a limit cannot, could fail to exist. All right. So here's our first example. So um, we got a graph here, and I want to evaluate the limit. So I want to find the limit. You guys remember what a limit is? The answer over here is a what? That's a y value. So the question is, what y value am I approaching as the x is approaching negative 2 from the right? Remember how that little plus means the right? Okay, so here's my curve. Now I want to find at what point on this curve does x equal negative 2, and hopefully you guys would recognize that's the spot right there, right? Now I want to approach that point from the right. Now as I approach that point from the right, what y value do I seem to be approaching? Negative 2. That's your answer. What if I were to approach the same value, negative 2, but from the left? What y value am I approaching? Negative 2. Good. And since the limit from the left is negative 2 and the limit from the right is negative 2, what is the limit of the function? Remember, that's important because for the limit to exist, it has to be the same from the right and the left. Remember how they have to meet together at one common point? Uh, now, this is going to seem stupid, but bear with me. What is f of negative 2? In other words, if this is my function, this is, this is say, not saying what is the y, what y value you're approaching. That's not what that's saying. That is saying when x equals negative 2, what is the y value? And what's the answer? It's negative 2 again. Okay, now you guys might think that's stupid, but it's not always like that. So I'll, you'll, you'll see why that's not stupid a little bit later. But for now... The limit, it's, it's approaching 2 from the left, it's approaching 2 from the right, therefore it's approaching 2 on both sides, and that's the actual value of the function at that point, okay? Uh, what, we, what we just did there is, I think our topic for next class is continuity. That's what's required for a function to be continuous. The limit from the right and left have to be the same, and the function has to actually equal that value at that point in order for it to be called continuous. But we'll talk more about that next time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Now, what x value am I approaching? 3. All right, so can you guys find where on my graph here where x equals 3? So we have an open dot here and a closed dot, right? Now, if I'm approaching 3 from the right, what y value am I approaching? Negative 2 again. Sorry, it's not very creative, but there it is. It's negative 3. What is the. What, what about if I approach 3 from the left? Negative 2. So what's number 7? <laughs> All right. What is f of 3? Is negative 3. All right. Because when x equals 3, where's the solid dot? Down here. So in this case, this is considered to be not continuous. Once again, we'll talk more about this later. But the function's not continuous at this point because the value of the function is not equal to its limit at that point. So the limit is negative 2, but the actual function's value is negative 3. All right. 
Let's take a look at another one here. I'm approaching what number? From which direction? From the left. So here we go. Here's x equals negative 4, right? So I'm approaching from the left. What's the limit from the left? 2. What is the limit? Okay, so now I'm approaching negative 4 from the right. What's the limit from the right? 3. Ah, they're not the same. So if the limit from the left and right are not the same, then what's the limit of my function? Does, does not exist. D and E. The limit does not exist because the limit from the left and right are not the same. And what is f of negative 4? Um, the actual y value where the closed dot is is 2. And they don't always put dots at the places that we care about. So what x value am I approaching on number 13? Okay, do you guys see where x would equal 0? There's not a dot there, but don't let that frighten you. Yeah, good job. So this would be about where x equals 0, right? And since it just wants the limit, that means we need to go from the left and the right. Are they both approaching the same spot? And what y value would you say that is? Negative 1.5. So that's limits on a graph. That's it. Chill. All right. You get to do a little bit now, of course. I don't think I printed this for you, so you just get to kind of look and answer. Go ahead and uh, talk about infinite limits versus limits at infinity. Um, I, I think that the, the way that we speak in English is helpful here. The, these are two different things, but I think if you just understand how English works, then you can differentiate them a little bit. A, a, limit, a limit is the what again? It's the y value. So in this case, this is an infinite y value. In other words, the answer is infinity. There you go. So this one is your y value at infinity. So this is an infinite y value and this is your y value at x equals infinity plus or minus. So in this case that's the, the y value be infinity over here the x value will be infinity but the y value could actually have a number there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the breakdown here. Um, so let's talk about infinite limits. Notice that the y value, the output, is infinity, plus or minus. Now what that usually is associated with, not necessarily, but usually, a lot of the times, it's associated with asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. Let me show you why. If you have a vertical asymptote and you're approaching that number and your graph shoots up infinitely high, right? So a lot of times when you see that, it, it could mean a vertical asymptote there. However, um, I'll, I'll show you the one exception to that down here in, in a second. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing. Let's talk about limits at infinity. What that means is as x goes to infinity, now that means I'm moving to the right infinitely far. I never stop going to the right. Or maybe if it's negative infinity, I never stop going to the left. But as you go that far, you reach a specific number. That's kind of weird, but your, your y value actually approaches a value as you go to infinity. Um, so in this case, the x value is infinity, as opposed to over here, the y value is infinity, right? And these ones are, they can be associated with horizontal asymptotes. So let me show you that. If you have a horizontal asymptote like right here, let's say like y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Now that graph is never going to stop moving to the right, is it? 
So the x value is approaching infinity. But what y value is it getting closer and closer to as it goes over there? 1. One. So as you see, as x is approaching some infinite number, y is actually approaching some specific set number. Um, so that's, that's kind of the difference between them. One is horizontal, one's vertical. Now it's possible you could put those two things together. You could have an infinite limit, meaning the y value goes to infinity, at infinity. That means as x goes to infinity. So that means that as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. A lot of functions are like that, actually. Take a linear function, like this one. You just go straight up. Is that graph ever going to stop going to the right? So x is going to infinity. Is it ever going to stop going up? No. So y is also going to infinity. So that's an infinite limit at infinity. And a lot of functions do that. <clears throat> the x and y both go to infinity. And if that's happening, that means there's no asymptote that you're really looking at in that case. That just means it kind of keeps going on forever. It's boundless. Okay? So let's go ahead and do an exercise here. So we've got a graph. We do have some asymptotes up here. Let's talk about the infinite limits first. So these are infinite limits. So that means all of my y values are going to be infinity. All my outputs, all my answers here are going to be infinity. So I want to approach x equals 3 from the right. So here's where x equals 3. Here's where x equals 3. Right? You guys agree? Now I'm going to approach that x value from the right. But as I do, my y value shoots up to what? The y value goes off into infinity, upwards, right? But what if I were to approach 3, but this time from the left? So here's where x equals 3, right? But now I want to approach that from the left. Now which, what's my answer? My y value is going to negative infinity now. Now, since the limit from the left and the right are not the same, what do I put here? Does not exist. What if they were both infinity? What would I put here? You would put infinity, but does it exist? No. Just remember, when, when your output is infinity, that means it doesn't exist, just so you know. But if you can say positive infinity or negative infinity, you should. But in this case, you can't, so you just put it does not exist. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at part B, infinite limits. Now, in this case, <clears throat> my x is approaching negative infinity. Now, if x is approaching negative infinity, what direction are we talking about going here? Up, right, left, or down? Left. It's x, which is left and right, and negative would be left. So this means I'm going to the left forever. So... Let's go ahead and draw some arrows that demonstrate that. As I go to the left forever, what y value am I approaching? That, that horizontal asymptote, I'm getting closer and closer to that, which is 1. You're right. Which way am I going here? This says x is approaching positive infinity. What does that mean? Which way am I going? Up, down, left, or right? We're going to the right. How far to the right? Infinity. So I'm going to just start here, and I'm going to start going to the right. And as I go to the right, what y value does it seem to be converging to? 1 again. And that's actually not uncommon. Usually with horizontal asymptotes, whatever it is on the left, it'll be the same on the right. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's usually what it is, okay? All right. Um, I remember last year my students got a little bit stuck on this one, so it might help to, like, Englishify this a little bit. So if you want to turn this into a statement, it might help. Um,
So what this piece here means is as we go to the left forever, we approach y equals 1. Okay, so if that helps you to kind of understand a little better, you can kind of turn that into English a little bit. <clears throat> For now, go ahead and try this. Now, on my last slide, I told you, okay, we're doing infinite limits, and I said we're doing limits at infinity. But part of this, I want you guys to kind of try to discern that yourself here. So I mixed them up a little bit. Um, so go ahead and see if you guys can figure out the answers to 1 through 9 here, and then we'll move on. Julia, what did you get? For number one. That's right. So if I said negative two from the left, you would be right. But since this is no, it's not telling us a direction, what does that mean? It means we look at both directions at once. Now, since they're going in opposite directions, we just say it doesn't exist. So if they don't if they don't give you a plus or a minus, then that means that you have to look at it from both. And in this case, since they're not agreeing, you have to say it does not it's negative two and not Oh. Oh. I'm so embarrassed. All right. So here's here's two. So now what's our answer, Julie? You want Negative two. Oh. That's twice. We have three strikes on the match. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Negative, negative two. Negative two? Negative two? Am I recording? You are recording. I can see I'm going to have to edit this video because I don't make mistakes. This is going to get edited. All right. So, negative two. All right. So, but you know what? It's the same answer anyway, right? I said it's the same answer, but it just didn't work. I was all flustered. No, you did it wrong. Wrong. Shut up. You did it wrong. Did I really? Are you messing with me? What? No, now it's right. Oh, okay. All right. Man, I'm all scared. All right, number two. All right. Chris, what did you get for two? Um, so I don't understand where it's just infinity, so I don't know which So when it's written like this, that means I'm moving which direction? If it was y. But this is x. Left. So as I move left, Chris, what y value does it look like this thing is trying to reach? Yeah, there you go. That's okay. I said I would. I, I said I would accept that, and I would. So Angelina put negative point five, which is fine. It's fine because you can't really tell. You would need more graph to see is it getting closer to zero or point five. There's no way to really tell. Um, but just so you know, usually if they want you to give it a funny answer like that, like not just zero, they would actually draw a dotted line there for you to see it. So, but I would totally accept it because that means you understand it. All right, John B., what'd you get for number four? All right, so we're approaching three from the left. Approaching three from the left. It's going to be negative infinity. No, because we're coming at three from the left. So here's x equals three, right? So we're approaching that from the left, and so that would be that branch. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Vivian, what'd you put for number five? Yep. Okay, that's fine. So this means we're moving which way? To the right forever. 
So as I move to the right forever, what y value do we seem to be reaching? She said 0.5. Is that acceptable? Yes. What I, I would probably just put zero, but 0.5 is acceptable. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at number six. Neha, what did you get for number six? <clears throat> Say that again. Yeah. So here's where x equals negative two, and I'm approaching that from the right, and that would be infinity. Okay, number seven. Chloe, which limits above are one-sided limits? That's true. I think there's one more though. Good. <laughs> Are you just randomly picking? Yes. Magical. All right. A one sided limit means that you're coming at the x value from one side. So here we're coming at three from the left, and here we're coming at two from the right. So good guessing skills. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number eight. Uh, Thea, what did you get for eight? Which of the limits above are infinite limits? Four? Hold on, let me make sure. Yes, four is an infinite limit. It was negative infinity. Anything else? And six as well. Uh, negative 2 from the right. Yes, positive infinity. Now, I don't want you guys to draw any incorrect conclusions. I don't want you to think, oh, one-sided limits are always infinite limits. That's not true. That's just a coincidence, okay? But the reason that these are infinite limits is because the y values, the output, was infinity, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Zarina. Zarina, what did you get for number 9? That's right. 2 and 5, because limits at infinity are when the x value is approaching infinity. So that would be 2 and 5. Okay? So there you guys have it. Uh, last thing I want to throw at you guys for today, there are three ways that a limit could fail to exist. We, we already know about these ones, right? When the limits are infinity. So like here, as x approaches c, y goes up forever or y goes down forever. That means the limit doesn't exist. The other way that we've already talked about is when the limit from the left and right are not the same. That's called a jump discontinuity. You might want to know that vocabulary. Okay, Both of these are kind of good vocab words to be aware of. They're not going to ever give you a vocab test on the test or anything like that, but um, they'll probably use those words, and you want to know what they're talking about. Um, this one we haven't talked about. It's kind of crazy, but some functions oscillate. As they approach a number, they oscillate even faster. So what's happening here is, I, I think a good example would be this one. I, I think. I could be wrong. That might actually have an answer. I'm not sure. But I, I have to think for a minute. No, that one has an answer. Never mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that one. But um, some functions, just to, to make a point, that they're always wiggling. But say if I, as I approach this x equals 0, every time I get closer to 0, it wiggles faster and faster and faster. And pretty much, no matter how close you get to 0, it's always going faster and faster. So... You can get infinitely close to zero, it's just going even faster. So it actually never even reaches anything at zero. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down. And if you were to do a table, you would see it's not approaching anything. It goes from a really high value to a low value, high, but just back and forth. So that, that's an oscillation. Um, they're usually associated with trig functions, right, that wiggle up and down. So, But that's another way that a limit could fail to exist. So those are your three non-existent limits. You'll have a question about that in your homework. And, and we'll kind of build on that concept tomorrow. Not, yeah, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. All right, so that's that, my good friends. We're done.